the payload of the packet that ends up being encrypted, um, uh, the, uh, all the headers and stuff are, 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 are not encrypted. They may be authenticated, but they're, they're not, uh, not encrypted. Um, also, if asterisk is offered SRTP by a device, it uh, will uh, go ahead and set up a, an encrypted uh, session with them. Um, uh, just by default, that's uh, kind of how we how we accept it. So, um, here is a uh, uh, Wireshark uh, dissection of an SRTP packet. Uh, it uh, it looks pretty much like a normal SRTP packet, but uh, at the end you can see that it just shows that it's an uh, encrypted payload. There, uh, the only way that that uh, that Wireshark really knows that that's an SRTP packet instead of an RTP packet is because it, uh, I didn't use a TLS when I was capturing it and it can look at the security, or uh, the fact that there were crypto offers uh, made during the uh, STP negotiation. So it, it shows that it's an SRTP encrypted payload instead there. But um, if you decide to, uh, if you decide to uh, try to dump the, the payload and, and, and listen to it, uh, it should sound something like that. Uh, it's just sounds like white noise. Uh, but uh, in fact, I think I've got this in there twice on accident, but didn't have time to fix that. So, um, so yeah, that, that's what it sounds like. Um, if uh, so about uh, SDES uh, security descriptions, uh, the keys are transported in the SDP. Um, since that's, uh, if, if that's uh, not, uh, if your signaling isn't encrypted, then you're just transmitting your, your, your master key kind of out in the open and uh, uh, man in middle attacks are, are no problem. Uh, uh, if someone sees both of the keys, they can, uh, you know, generate the session keys and, and decrypt the audio. I mean, it's it's not, I mean, it, it basically makes it obfuscation instead of encryption. Uh, so uh, most people end up using uh, TLS plus uh, the S descriptions, the security descriptions for, uh, for SRTP in SIP. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that it's not a, an end-to-end solution for security. Uh, you basically, a, a SIP proxy has to have access to the, the, the headers of a SIP message to be able to route it and also modify those headers. Uh, um, so you end up setting an encryption session with the, the proxy, it decrypts everything, and if you're, uh, when it decrypts that, it decrypts the, 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 uh, the SDP as well and can see the keys. So uh, you, if you're using TLS plus S descriptions, it's definitely just kind of a hop by hop. You have to trust every proxy that is going to route your call. So I mean that's something to to, to be aware of. You uh, you you need uh, you, know, you need to trust the admins of the servers that you use, basically. Um, uh, so if uh, if security descriptions and uh, are uh, so limited, then uh, the reason that people use them is really just because it's really easy to implement. And uh, uh, then some people have implemented it, the phones do, so it kind of gets, uh, gets it set up to where uh, people implement it because that's what other people have implemented, et cetera. So um, uh, it might be better to, to use one of the uh, the, the newer methods, but uh, we just haven't kind of got a critical mass there yet. But um, uh, as an example, this is uh, what an invite with uh, uh, using security descriptions looks like. You'll just see the A equals crypto lines uh, there. Uh, that's uh, that's really uh, what it mostly looks like when people uh, when people implement it. So. Um, not uh, not a big change. Um, since uh, 
the word secure means different things to different people. Uh, we thought that one of the best ways to, uh, to control encryption uh, in asterisk would be through the dial plan. Um, uh, that way admins can kind of uh, define what they mean by secure and set up kind of their, their, their own uh, requirements for different calls. Uh, uh, one thing that's important is the ability to be able to branch in the dial plan whether or not the current channel is uh, secure in the, the way that you uh, want. Uh, you can test both uh, whether the media or the signaling is uh, secure uh, and decide which, which is uh, important to you. Um, also, one of the things that's important to do is to be able to force uh, outbound calls to, to be secure based on, uh, uh, like if you get an inbound call from one phone that's secure, uh, to be able to inspect that and then force the outbound call to be secure as well. Um, so uh, these two commands are, are what you would use in the dial plan to be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, uh, it actually stores that information on the existing channel. So when a, a new channel is created that's going to be bridged to that channel, uh, that will fail uh, if, it, if that channel type doesn't support uh, the type of encryption that you need or if it supports it but it's just not enabled. So. Um, a couple of uh, quick dial plan examples of branching. Uh, the easiest way to do it uh, is really just uh, a couple go-to if statements. Uh, you check uh, whether the, the channel has secure signaling or media, and if it, uh, uh, it doesn't, then just jump to, to a failure condition. Uh, pretty simple. Um, Controlling the encryption on a bridge call, uh, one thing that Asterisk doesn't support with SRTP is optional encryption uh, or opportunistic encryption. Uh, the reason is that there's really no F RFC compliant way that, that I found that that that, that works. Uh, different phones have come up with uh, different uh, manufacturers have come up with different ways to do it. Uh, the different phones don't always come up with the same way. It's a pain to try to support them all. And then also, I just think the idea of opportunistic uh, encryption is silly. Um, if something needs to be encrypted and secure, then it needs to be. Um, if you are just kind of optionally doing it uh, and you kind of get used to it, most phones, they only have uh, maybe like a little lock symbol or, or whatever when, uh, when a call is secure. Uh, you see that on the phone over and over and over again, and eventually you just kind of don't. And then one day, because you've got optional security, uh, the call isn't secure. And maybe that's the time when it was really important for it to be secure and you just didn't notice. So I, I, I just think that the idea of optionally securing something like, oh, well, it might, it, it'd be nice if it was secure. It just, it kind of goes against my very grain as a person. So. Um, but if you want to do uh, something like that, all you have to do is make a call uh, like we do up here. And uh, you see that we set that the outbound call needs to have uh, encryption, uh, encrypted signaling and media, and then we dial. Now, if that uh, endpoint doesn't support encryption, that, that, that dial will fail and there will be a uh, specific hang-up cause that's returned. In this case, it ends up being 58, which is uh, like a bearer capability uh, error. But anyway, you can test for that and then jump in your dial plan to, uh, to your, your failure scenario and then maybe warn the, the person making the call that the outbound call is not going to be secure and then set up uh, the call to where you clear the fact that it needs to be encrypted and then make the call again and uh, and then it should go through. So in, in my opinion, that's one of the better ways to handle it. So you actually can, can warn people in advance that uh, a call may not be, be secure. So uh, I'm also uh, going to kind of end talking about some of the limitations. Um, Asterisk is a man in the middle. I mean, 
Uh, we talk about man-in-the-middle attacks uh, in security all the time, and asterisk by design is that man-in-the-middle. Uh, uh, you, you can see little uh, asterisk thick man there uh, with, with two calls, uh, and, and that, that's really how asterisk operates. So you have one side of the call that's a call with one person, another side of the call that's a call with uh, the other side, and then asterisk, you know, just bridging that call and uh, basically relaying what the other call said to the, to the other one. So um, asterisk has the ability to record the media, even if it's encrypted, because it transmits all the audio internally unencrypted. So uh, monitor, chance by, voicemail, uh, you know, any of the applications in asterisk has access, have access to, to that media. Um, I've, I've heard people say that Oh, I want uh, I want SRTP support in Asterisk so that uh, you know if the CEO is on a call with someone that's important, the server admins don't have access to the audio. That's not how it works. Uh, Asterisk has the audio. That means the admins can can use any of those to 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 listen to the audio. So uh, it's a matter of trust. Uh, if uh, currently if uh, the the fear of being fired doesn't scare the admins. <laughs> Then, then you're just kind of, kind of out of luck there. So, just I just want people to to understand what what we provide and what we don't at this time. So, um, that uh, is pretty much the end of my presentation. So, if uh, anyone has any questions, um, here I am.